Okay, we are back out on the street today. We are in the neighborhood of Palermo, again. Uh, like I said, real big neighborhood. We're in a different part of Palermo. And today, we're going to see a very different thing. Today, we're going to go see the largest mosque in all of Latin America. It's called the King Fahd Islamic Cultural Center, I believe is the name. And um, yeah, it's the largest mosque in all of Latin America. And actually, Argentina has a, um, a very sizable Muslim population. The numbers are not exact because the Argentine government in the census does not, uh, doesn't like ask questions about religion, but the estimates are like 400 to 500,000 Muslims living in Argentina, which is like 1% of the population. And depending on what statistics you look at from different census, uh, different studies and things like that, uh, Argentina may actually have like roughly half of all Muslims living in Latin America live here in Argentina. So it's a very, very large population. Um, as far as percentage of uh, the total population, I think the only country in South America that is uh, higher is Suriname. And of course, Suriname has um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people who immigrated from like South Asia, um, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and then also Indonesia. So places where um, there's a very high, high percentage of Muslims in the population. So that makes sense. Um, but here in Argentina, uh, probably the largest single uh, population of uh, Muslims in Latin America. And as we round the corner here, I'll flip the camera around, because right across the street, that is the, the place. It's the King Fahd uh, Islamic Cultural Center. And we gotta figure out exactly where we can go in there is a tour that we can take, and uh, the tour is free. Uh, oh, you can see the minarets up there, out beyond the tree. So the tour is free. Um, it starts in like about 20 minutes here. I don't want to get there a little early. I don't want to be the guy that shows up, you know, right at the last minute. Uh, but um, one thing I did find is I don't think we can actually film once we're on the grounds. Uh, I think we can take pictures, which we will, uh, but we can't, we can't film. So, I guess we're just gonna have to get by with pictures. It's, it'll, be, it'll be kind of the same as, uh, as uh, the Templo Libertad, where we were before. Couldn't film in there, we could only take pictures. So, uh, we'll take a lot of pictures inside. Hold on, I'm gonna cross the street here. Try not to get run over, as always. So uh, we'll take pictures when we get inside. And I'm sure, I mean, I'm looking at this thing, I've seen pictures of it, you know, on the internet before, and it's gigantic, it's absolutely huge. And it's really amazing architecture, so we're definitely gonna wanna take some pictures inside of the architecture. And uh, maybe we can film outside here before we go in. Yeah, here, here's a good shot. Flip it around. So it's not only a mosque, but it's also, I think there's a library. There's a school, uh, or, or maybe even two schools. Uh, there's a dormitory for students who, I guess, live here full-time studying Islam. And, uh, yeah, the, the numbers on it are pretty crazy. There's, like, a, the prayer hall, the main prayer hall for men, um, like, holds something like 1,200 people. And then there's a separate prayer hall for women that holds, like, four or 500 people. So, I mean, it is, like, <laughs> it's massive. It's absolutely massive. I think it was, uh, the land was donated back in the 90s um, by, uh, by Argentina, by the government, and something like 34,000 square kilometers, giant piece of land here in Palermo. And uh, the, uh, of course it's called the King Fahd Islamic Cultural Center. It's named after uh, the king of Saudi Arabia, or the former king of Saudi Arabia, King Fahd. 
and this was built uh, by the Saudis and designed um, by the Saudis by uh, I can't remember the architect's name right now off the top of my head I'll put it I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll write it in here like right here and uh, so so you'll know who it is uh, anyway so it's very very amazing looks like there's already some people lined up in the front probably uh, waiting to take the tour and uh, like I said I don't think we are allowed to film inside but we can definitely film the outside and uh, or at least until someone tells us to stop filming we can film the outside and uh, man, it's, it really is big it's big I mean it goes from like all the way down that end of the block all the way down there and then and, and this is sort of like this triangle uh, area that's that's um, bordered by this street here this Avenue and then on the other side there's a, a rail line that comes out of Retiro that borders it on the other side and they have the whole uh, the whole like triangle here on the corner so it's a really really large plot piece of land and you know like I said largest uh, mosque in all of Latin America and you know when I, when I was looking into it, I was trying to find, like, what's the largest mosque in the United States? What's the largest mosque in, uh, in uh, like, uh, Canada, Mexico? And I couldn't find any that were larger than this, not even close. So it may actually not only be the largest mosque in Latin America, it might be the largest mosque in all of the Americas, which would basically make it the largest mosque in all the Western Hemisphere. Is that possible? Maybe it is. I don't know. But either way, we're going to see it. Uh, of course, the tour will be in Spanish, uh, likely, and we're not going to understand any of that. Um, they have some, they have an information office here, and the signs are written in Spanish uh, and also uh, in Arabic. And of course, we speak very little Spanish. We Our Spanish is not great, and our Arabic is non-existent. So, Either way, we're probably not going to understand a lot, but I mean, what else is new? So, uh, once we get the tour going, I'll definitely get as many pictures as I can. And then after it's over, uh, we can talk, talk a little bit more about what we thought. So I started taking pictures even before we went in through the front gate. I got a picture outside uh, while we were waiting and took a picture of the minarets. So you can see the scale of the building. It really is huge. The minarets are several stories tall. Um, when, the, when the tour started, we went through the main gate, and there they checked everybody's ID for, you know, obvious security reasons. Um, and then when we passed through the main gate and the tour started in this courtyard, um, and above the doors, uh, it's written here, above the three doors, Islam is the religion of love. We open our hearts and doors, and Islam invites peace. That's what's written above these three doors. So after that, we passed through this courtyard into like a second courtyard. And above the first door, written in Spanish, Islam is moderation and justice. Now, the other two, I didn't know at the time um, what they said because I don't read Arabic. But I used Google Translate later to, uh, to translate into English. And the second door, it says, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And the third door says, Islam is central and moderate, which is similar to, you know, what it says in Spanish over the first door. So after this courtyard, we passed uh, this sign, which I thought was interesting. Um, I didn't quite understand at the time. I mean, I can read Spanish and sort of, sort of understand it, but um, I knew it was about something about Argentine Independence Day. And what it is, it's celebrating both Argentine Independence Day and also the Aid al-Adha, which I did not know what that was, but it is actually a very significant holiday in Islam called the Feast of Sacrifice. And it honors Abraham's willingness to sacrifice one of his sons, Isaac or Ishmael. 
And also here, you can see the full name of the center, which is the Islamic Cultural Center Custodian of the Two Holy King Fahd Mosques in Argentina. So it's quite a long name. Um, we, we've been referring to it as, you know, Islamic Cultural Center or King Fahd Mosque, but that is the full name of, uh, of the complex. So after we passed that sign, we moved into yet another courtyard, and this is right outside the entrance to the King Fahd bin Abdulaziz Mosque. And that's the mosque that we toured. So the whole time we were doing this, the guide was explaining um, about the history of the building and the construction, but he was also explaining about the religion of Islam. And unfortunately, he was doing it in Spanish, so I didn't understand much of it, as is normal on the tours that we've been taking um, all around Argentina. But, you know, it was still, it was still um, a good tour, and the parts that I did understand were informative. So we went into the main uh, sort of lobby area of the mosque, just past this first door. And in here, there were these signs on the wall. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of information about Islam on these signs. And at first, when I was coming through here, I sort of understood what, uh, what they were on these signs. But I did a little more research afterwards. And so the first sign on the left shows the five most important prophets of Islam, Muhammad, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. The second sign shows uh, the five pillars of Islam, the testimony of faith, the prayer, the mandatory charity, the fast during Ramadan, and the Hajj, which is the pilgrimage to Mecca. The third sign is the five mandatory prayers. There is a prayer that is done before dawn, a prayer at midday, a prayer in the afternoon, a prayer just after sunset, and a prayer at night. And the fourth sign is the six pillars of faith, which is a little bit confusing, but it is different from the five pillars of Islam. And the six pillars of faith are the belief in Allah or God, the belief in the angels, the belief in the scriptures, the belief in the messengers or the prophets that we saw, you know, from that first sign, the belief in the last day, which is judgment day, and the belief in the divine decree, which is kind of hard to explain, but it basically means that like Allah or God is all knowing and that everything that happens, everything that is, that is was, uh, and will be is all like decreed or um, it's all known and decreed by Allah. So that's basically what these signs mean. Like I said, I didn't quite understand them at the time because they're in Spanish and I was trying to pay attention to the tour also. So I really just only got a quick look at them. But afterwards, I was able to uh, take some more time to translate them and put that information here. So. After this, we passed by the main prayer room, and I was able to get a picture in there, but we actually come back to that later, so let's keep on moving. Um, in the next room, there was a really interesting model of the entire complex, and what you see on the right is what we toured. So you can sort of see the front gate down at the bottom. We came through there, and then we went to the right into the large... Uh, mosque area on the right, the prayer room with the dome, um, is what I took a picture of that we just saw. And we didn't go into the left side of the complex. That, I imagine, is like the school and the dormitory and other stuff that's just not part of the tour. And after we passed that model, we went into this area right outside the um, exposition hall, which we do actually go into and tour. And here I could see there was an entrance to a library where it says Biblioteca, but we didn't go inside there. So we did go into the exposition hall and this picture, this is like the first thing you see inside the exposition hall. And I have to be honest, I don't understand what all of this is. Um, I didn't understand the explanation in Spanish at the time, unfortunately. 
and I also don't read Arabic. So I have no idea what these are. I don't know if they're just artwork or if they have some sort of religious significance. I have no idea. Maybe someone who's watching this video um, who reads Arabic and understands what these are can explain it down in the comments. Who knows? Hopefully they will. Otherwise, we're all, it's just going to be a mystery for all of us. So after that, we, uh, we continued on into the, uh, the exposition hall. And what I noticed is there's actually a lot of space in the exposition hall, probably like more than half of the space in the exposition hall was dedicated to the line, which I don't know if you know about it, but it is a extremely ambitious um, civil engineering project that they're taking on in Saudi Arabia that they have planned. Um, we could make we could make a whole video about the line. It's extremely ambitious. It's also a pretty controversial project, but we just don't have time to get into all of that here. But what was really, really interesting is they dedicated a lot of space in this exposition hall specifically to the line, to that project. Um, like I said, there's a lot of information available out there, but I took some pictures of the um the you know what they had showing for the line and to me honestly it kind of looked like a really slick like marketing pitch for the project um it was interesting that they had dedicated that much space to it here uh in in this uh, exposition hall and at the back of the exposition hall sort of in the center there were life-size cutouts of i think this is the saudi royal family and, you know, Saudi Arabia, they paid for the, uh, for the construction of the entire mosque back in the 90s. Uh, Argentina, the government of Argentina donated the land, but the Saudis paid for it, the construction. And I think, you know, if you pay for something that is as huge and clearly like as expensive as this building, you get to put your picture in it. And they did right here in the, uh, in the exposition hall. So after that, we, um, we left. And on the way back out, I noticed um, these pictures here that I didn't really notice before, but they are, um, they're like pictures showing the Hajj, which is the, the pilgrimage to Mecca. So I got a quick shot of those, thought they were pretty interesting. And then we returned back to the prayer room, the one that we passed earlier. And they were, uh, the guide was explaining a little more about the prayer room, and he actually said that it can hold up to 2,000 people, which is more than I originally thought. Um, originally, I think I said it was 1,400 that it holds, or something like that, 1,500, but he said it actually holds up to 2,000 people, which is, is interesting. So uh, after that, we were allowed into the prayer hall. We had to take our shoes off, and... Um, a lot of the women covered their hair with scarves, which uh, they actually provide if you don't have one. Um, they'll actually provide you one there, so good to know. And the one part that we were allowed to film was uh, a young man who sang the call to prayer. So you can see that here. So after we watched that, we also watched um, that young man and our guide and a couple other staff members. They did their midday prayer and we observed that. And then afterwards, when we left the uh, uh, we left that room, there was um, like a large bathroom outside the prayer room, and this it was explained was where people perform wudu, which is like a washing ceremony that happens before you pray. There's a very specific process. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Um, it was explained, but like, you know, once again, um, it was explained in Spanish. So I didn't quite understand all of it, but I know that it's very important and it's something that is done before you pray. And there is a very specific process to it. If someone knows more about it, maybe they can write, uh, write it down in the comments. So 
After that, we came back out into the lobby where those four signs with all the information were, and uh, the guide answered a few questions that people had, and that was about it. The tour was over at that point. So I thanked the guide, and we all headed back outside, and that was it. Alright, so we're all done with the tour. It was good. It was a good tour. It was about an hour long, and uh, didn't get to see like the entire interior, which makes sense because there's like you know there's dormitories, there's a whole uh, library and a school and everything. We didn't get to see in that, uh, but we did get to see the uh, the main like prayer room in the mosque, and uh, got some good pictures, of course, which you've probably seen because I've cut them in and talked about them. And you can see behind me, like the exterior. I mean, the building really is just, I mean, it's really huge. And really, really amazing uh, as far as the size. The architecture is more modern because this is a modern building. I mean, the thing was completed in the year 2000. So, you know, compared to like uh, the, the, uh, the temple, the, the synagogue that we went to, the Templo Libertad, it's a, it's a much older building than this. This one's much newer. Um, but uh, I think overall, it was, a, it was a good tour. Learned a lot about the building itself, uh, the construction, and also just like uh, about um, the history of Islam and then, you know, Islam itself. So a lot of the tour, I think, was about uh, sort of teaching people who, are, who don't know about Islam, about the religion, and things like that. But also there was a good amount of information about... Um, about uh, like Islam specifically in Argentina and like the history, uh, which is good. Uh, I, you know, I, I understood some of it. I didn't understand all of it. The gentleman who was leading the tour was speaking in Spanish and uh, he was also speaking kind of quiet. And so it was especially hard to hear when, uh, when he was speaking quietly, but that's okay. That's okay. I enjoyed the tour and um, you know, when we came here, we came here on a bus. And I think to go back, we're gonna loop around the block here, and we can actually catch a train. There's a train station, the train goes into Retiro, and then we can catch the subte down to Constitucion. We'll catch our normal train back to Wilde and Constitucion. And, uh, and that'll be it, I think. Uh, but we're gonna call it here for this video. Um, it was very interesting and you know like I had mentioned before it was something that really interested me because I didn't know before looking into it before starting to research it that there was such a sizable Muslim population here in Argentina so it's very interesting and um, interesting to know that Argentina you know is sort of like the, has, has a very large um, as far as you know in the relationship to the rest of Latin America a very large Muslim population and also a very large Jewish population which um, you know as I mentioned before Argentina I've said this in, in some videos in, in more than a few videos Argentina is um, is a place that is quite welcoming to foreigners and it has been especially during the period of like the late 1800s up until the, around the time of World War I they just had an open immigration policy, so there were there were quite a lot of um, people who immigrated to Argentina from all over uh, the world, and the descendants of those people, you know, they live here in Argentina to this day. Uh, you know, one of the examples is if you see a lot of Argentine people, their their names and their family names, they sound Italian, and there's a reason for that. It's because during that period of uh, open immigration, a lot of Italians moved here. And it's the same for, uh, for people from other parts of the country, for people of other cultures, other religions. So that's why you see such a sizable population of all these different groups um, in Argentina. Anyway, I think that's gonna be it for the video. Uh, had a good one, I think. And um, I don't know, I guess we'll see you in the next one.